Hi, my name is Natalie, and this is Natalie Lawyer Chick. I'll be discussing popular topics through a legal lens. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. Hey, YouTube. How's it going? My name is Natalie. I'm a criminal defense attorney. This is um, about a child support court TV show that is available on YouTube called Support Court. It hasn't aired uh, for a while, but it's with Judge Vonda B, Judge Vonda B, and I just kind of wanted to like give you guys that are interested in how some of these court shows go and kind of the ins and outs of them and why they're not really court um, from a real lawyer's perspective. Let's go. See, and already you know off the bat that this is not something that they are airing on um, any type of cable news network or regular television network because look at the graphics, okay? This is something I can make. And why this baby in there? That's just so terrible, <laughs> terrible graphics. Mr. Schaefer, you brought this case before the court, sir? Yes, ma'am, I did. Okay, go ahead. What's going on? Well, uh, my son was uh, uh, married to the respondent and uh, he died. They had a three, they had a child that's now three years old that has been left in my custody. And uh, I'm asking for some sort of relief or support because I'm retired from the military and on a fixed income. Okay. First of all, my condolences for the thank loss you. of your I son. And thank you for your service as well. Oh, thank you. How long has the child lived with you? Um, two years. Two years. Has mom given you any support for the child? Uh, no, she hasn't. Uh, she hasn't bought anything. Uh, not, not significantly, no. But I haven't had, I've just now come to the point where I need some relief and I need some help. I so I'm going to stop it right there. So this is the custodial uh, guardian, the uh, father of the father of the child who is deceased. The father of the child is deceased. He's the grandfather and he is the custodial parent. He has had this child in his custody for two years. So if for you, the, for those of you who don't know, I handled what was called the child support docket, where I represented people that were um, accused of being either in contempt of court for not paying their child support or in dereliction of their duty for non-payment of child support, right? So I represented them for the criminal side of the um, child support proceedings. Usually by the time I got someone, they had gone way too far in not paying and the Bureau, Bureau of Support Enforcement, as they were called at the time, will file a petition with the court for the court to put hold the person in contempt for not paying their child support. I got a bird's eye view of the uh, process of establishing child support. And so off of uh, the very beginning of this, this is not what would happen in a child support contempt proceeding where someone is seeking child support. First of all, you would go to your local bureau and the bureau would assess um, how much uh, you make as the custodial parent, how much are your expenses. And then they would assess how much the other person makes, that's the non-custodial parent, and if that other person has any children or anything like that. These types of nebulous like, oh, has she ever done anything? And he's like, no, not really. They're going to take into account, what do you mean by not really? You know, how much is it that you make on your fixed income? Um, how much is it that you have to expend for things? So far, we haven't heard any numbers. And this this part of it in establishing child support wouldn't even be happening in front of the judge. It would be happening with support enforcement. They would just sign the order to put it um, to put it into place. And that's how we know that this is not a realistic look of what child support court or child support enforcement even looks like. Well, I, I agree with that, ma'am. Well, I've been traveling. My job had me traveling a lot and I was in between jobs. I'm, I'm making 35,000 now. Okay. And you know, I'm not- Where are you traveling? Well, I'm a travel agent. Okay. So because of that, I can just travel. I get discounts and I get to fly free. So. Oh my God, that is amazing. So, but but that has nothing to do with you giving some sort of financial support. I didn't to this. It. Excuse me, I was talking. <laughs> that has nothing to do with you giving financial support to this man for the support of your child. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> she's entertaining at least, but this is not a judge, right? 
And um, I'm sure she's probably an attorney, but this is not a judge. This is not, um, uh, no, <laughs> this is not a judge, okay? Even the TV judges that we get a lot of the times, they will, um, you know, be retired judges or formal, former judges, no longer si sitting judges, obviously. Like Judge Judy is, is a retired judge. Uh, judge Mathis is a retired judge. Um, a lot of these like judges that we see on these court shows are retired judges. This is not a judge. This woman has never been a judge and I can tell off the break. Your child, not his child, your child. If it's my child, that is correct. But like I said, my job had me traveling and I really didn't have the extra money. Also, nobody would be admitting off the break that they are not paying their child support, but they're traveling, right? So this looks like you have money. And I have never come across a child support client who is in dereliction of their duty for paying child support that would say, oh, I didn't pay because I've been traveling and I've been doing these like great things. You know, they would instead be saying, Actually, even though I'm the non-custodial parent, as he said, I have done some type of, con of contribution. This is the type of contribution that I've had. And if I was her attorney, obviously these people are pro se and this is not a real child support court. But if I was her attorney, I would bring in accountings of things that she has done. Like, for example, has she bought diapers? Has she bought formula? Has she bought school clothes? Has she come and gotten the child on the weekends to visit with the child and then paid for those entire trips? So that those type of things can go into the accounting of the arrears, which is the back unpaid child support. You're gonna want to have something counted towards. And no one is gonna try to make themselves look this bad by saying, oh, I've been traveling. Usually the Bureau of Support Enforcement will have to do some type of investigation or whatever um, court-appointed attorney deals with the prosecution side of things would have to do some investigation in order to say, oh, we found out that she's been traveling, but this is the worst possible case that any party could put forward. And again, another reason why just, I just cannot believe that this is a real uh, child support uh, situation. Uh, just, this is not real. This is, this is, there's no way that this is real. What are you doing with, with yourself every day? What, what do you do? Tell me about your traveling. Well, well, I had got this new condo for one thing. And you know, that, wait a so minute, you got a, you have, you know, you got a condo and you're yeah. traveling, yeah. but you, how much is this condo? Well, I'd rather not say. No, I'd rather you say. Because I Again, there is a, <laughs> there are forms that you fill out when you are responding to child support court and you have to fill those out. Um, if someone is trying to get child support, they will fill out a form saying, this is how much I make, this is how much the expenses are, I need child support, please impose child support. As the respondent coming into court, they would already know how much she pays in expenses. This would not be a surprise to any judge. By the time the case gets in front of a judge, it is well established. The person's going to bring in pay stubs. They can also do a search based on your social security number and find out how much you make, even if you don't want to tell the court how much you make. The court knows how much you're making before you even come in there. And again, this is not to say that people don't... Um, spend an exorbitant amount of money on rent or condo fees or whatever the case may be or mortgage it's just that the court would already be aware of this because there are mechanisms in place um for them to find this out no judge will be surprised as to how much she's paying they might have a problem with it but they would never be surprised as to how much she's paying per month in living expenses how much is this condo uh, it's pretty steep it's pretty steep ma'am what does that mean it, that means nothing to me. Steep. You know how many people come in here with things that are steep? I need a number. I like to live nice. And so I pay 5000 See, you know what? You you obviously came here to waste my time. No, no, I didn't. Yes, really, did. I didn't. Ma'am, really yes, you did. Question. I've asked you a very specific question. How much is your condo? Well, I pay 5000 a month. $5,000 a month? Mm -hmm. Sir. Yes, ma'am. Is this three-year-old in daycare? Uh, yes, he's in preschool because uh, he has some special needs. What? How much is daycare? Uh, daycare it runs about three hundred a week. Three hundred dollars a week. Don't you get some kind of this? Help and don't you no. just need to wait your turn until <laughs> I come to you? Yes. Sir. So obviously, five thousand dollars is an exorbitant amount, and I think before you heard that she makes thirty-five thousand dollars a year, right? There is no way on God's green earth that someone making $35,000 a year 
Um, someone making $35,000 a year for their take home pay is going to be able to pay $5,000 a month in condo fees. Even if you do all your traveling for absolutely free, there's no way that you're paying $5,000 a month for your condo if you're only making $35,000 a year. That is that math literally makes no sense. You know, with taxes and everything like that, that's literally impossible. So that's another way we know that this is like some really really bad acting and they didn't even take the time to like you know, figure out the math on this and you have to at least give someone something that's like attainable, even if it's like, oh, the majority of your income is going towards, um, you know, um, child is going towards your condo. It has to at least be something that's underneath the amount of money that you make, you know? So BS. <laughs> I'm not talking to you. Thank you, sir. The one thing that is true though, is that um, you should not speak directly to the party. You should address the court and you should not cut people off while they're speaking. So that was one of the few things that's happened so far that's anything like a real courtroom. $300 a week. Mm -hmm. And what type of special needs does a child have? Uh, he's, uh, he's autistic. Okay. Does he have to, you have to pay for like any medical expenses? Uh, he needs special counseling. And of course he has regular doctor visits. Counseling. Does mom show up to any of those doctor's visits or anything? Well, no, I, of course I haven't always told her, but I, haven't haven't expected exactly her. you haven't given him any money either well oh uh, well i'm not talking to you still <laughs> she's so adorable the judge she's so cute but once again not a judge <laughs> no and that's not to say we haven't seen plenty of examples of judges behaving badly but this is not a judge it, it definitely if she's spending five thousand dollars a month on a condo i don't even and this audience is eerily quiet for this crazy information that's coming out during this hearing she she is spending five thousand dollars a month on a condo paying absolutely no child support flying around the world for free because she likes to live in lux luxury and only making three thousand dollars thirty five thousand dollars a year most people would be gasping at this type of information but they are eerily quiet aren't they and once again this all of these things would be known to the court at the time that you appear before the court because there are forms that you fill out to inform the court that this is how much you're spending on certain expenses related to this child. You can stay in the condo, I, I need that. Okay, I well, that. I need a condo. Can you give me your condo? Exactly. <laughs> so your child support, based on $35,000 a year, um, are you carrying any type of health insurance on the child? See, that's another thing. Since uh, On the child? Yes. Well, the child is autistic, so the child gets a check. So... I don't understand why you need my money. Okay. Because you get again, from the government. Again. Again. Excuse me. I need my child. Excuse me. Last time I checked, I was the judge. You are. Okay, thanks. That means that I ask the questions and I address him. He addressed me. Okay. You do not address him. All right. Okay? I understand. How much is health insurance for the child only? I have no idea what health insurance is for the child. So, obviously, you don't pay it. Sir, okay. how much... <sighs> oh my goodness. So uh, once again, this is something that the court would know going into it. I just, moving on. Is health insurance for the child It's only? just short of $400. Short for the child only? Yes. Ma'am, you... I'm covered under the VA. Well, I thought he was getting government... No. If he's covered under the VA, then his dependents would be covered as well. Well, I thought you should have been giving him something for child support. So we're going to go ahead and make that happen today. And the child has been living with you for the past two years, you say? Two years. So not only am I going to make you pay child support, ma'am, you're going to pay back pay as well. I can't I, afford that. Guess what? Sell your condo, then you can afford that. So I have your gross based on $35,000 a year at $2,916 Again, so that's how much she's making a month, $2,916. How would she be spending $5,000 a month on a condo? And 67 cents. And you said the uh, health insurance is $400 a month? Yes. That's pretty steep based on, well, not that your coverage is not steep, but in Texas, we're only allowed to take 9% of her gross. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so based on 9%, it'll be $262 
and 50 cents. Will that start? Can you give me maybe three months before that starts so I can rebudget my bills? Let me think about that. No. <laughs> so $262 and 50 cents. I had a question. Why have you been so hard on me? Ma'am, I'm not being hard on you. You <laughs> have not given this man any type of child. It's like a formula on this show because this is not the only one I've seen. There's a couple of more where people, where the non-custodial parent like, why are you being so mean to me? Or they'll ask the judge, why is she being so mean? I don't know why they wrote that into the script, but no, that's okay. So first of all, if we're going to really talk about child support and the way that the non-custodial parent has to run, um, has to pay and the way that it runs, the non-custodial parent is on the hook for uh, providing insurance for the child. Either they have to pay a portion of, this, of the insurance based on a percentage of their income, or they have to provide insurance through their employment if that's the cheaper way to insure the child. So if she has a job that provides insurance, she has to put the child on her insurance if the non-custodial parent does not have insurance and they're paying out of pocket. Um, it's also, again, proportional to the amount of money that the non-custodial parent is making and the custodial parent is making. And we haven't heard anything yet on what the custodial parent is making. She has to pay a certain percentage of her income, but also that has to be in proportion, in proportion to what the grandfather is paying. And we haven't heard any testimony on what the grandfather makes and what he pays to take care of the child and what the expenses are outside of the cost of insurance. So highly unrealistic. There's no way that this judge would be able to meet uh, uh, the different rubrics for setting child support in the state of Texas or any state support to support your child him. and then you come to court and say you don't have money but you travel and you have a five thousand dollar a month condo which once again is literally impossible to make thirty five thousand dollars a year and then pay five thousand dollars a month for a condo literally impossible um uh. <laughs> but you don't give him anything a month I, I don't have it. I just don't have well, it. Well, I can't help you. So, it's going to be, I have your child support obligation. And how many children do you have? I'm sorry, ma'am. Just one. One child. So this Okay, so that is something that's accurate. The courts do have to look at whether or not the person already has children. Because if you already have children, then the amount of child support that you have to pay is going to uh, basically be reduced by the amount of children that you already have. A funny little quirk of the child support system is that usually the first child to file, the first parent to file for their child, usually receives the most amount of child support. Uh, because every subsequent child has a reduction in their child support based on that first child if they're living outside the home and you're seeking child support against a non-custodial parent. So that's an interesting little factoid. Based on 20%, let's see here. <clears throat> Sir, you said you all have a cordial relationship. Are you okay with continuing that health insurance? Yes, I am. Okay, and we, are you seeking any type of reimbursement from her on the health insurance? No, I, I mean, it's all in the past. Okay, okay, well, you're, you, you got really lucky. He cut you a break. So your child support obligation, your net comes out to $2,466.03. Your child support obligation comes out to $394.56. Now, your back child support, that $394... How much does he make? Okay, that's something that goes into the child support calculation. How much does he make? How much are her expenses outside of the condo that she has to pay for, allegedly? How much is her car note? How much is her uh, student loans if she has them? How much does she have to pay in uh, insurance uh, for her vehicle? How much does she have to pay for her groceries? All these types of things go into the child support calculation, but I haven't heard them mentioned once. $4.56, you have to pay that back from the time that the child has lived with oh, Mr. Wow, Shaver. That's not yes, ma'am. In Texas, it goes back four years. Your child is three. So with that... <sighs> that doesn't make any sense. So in states like Texas, where they count the period of time where the mother was pregnant, 
they would add that additional year on of child support if it's the father that is the non-custodial parent who the mother is seeking child support from and he was not involved in the woman's life while she was pregnant. They go back to the time of conception. Very interesting law in Texas, you know, I guess because it's a pro-life state and things like that. That's why they think of it that way. But that doesn't make any sense if she was pregnant at the time, then she wasn't failing to provide support for the child while she was pregnant. In addition, for the additional year after the child was alive, the father, the biological father was alive and had custody of the child according to this script. So it doesn't make any sense that the father, the father of the father, the grandfather, should be reimbursed for what his son was paying. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So the arrearage should really only go back to two years that the grandfather has had custody of the child. <sighs> So much is wrong here. <laughs> Calculation, it comes out to $14,204.16 to be paid monthly at a... This lady right here in the audience in the burgundy jacket, she's in another one of these videos as the non-custodial parent and the father is coming after her for child support and she also has some crazy things to say. So they couldn't even fill their <laughs> audience. It's supposed to be like a different day, but here she is in the same exact outfit um, sitting in the audience. This is a mess. <laughs> I can see why this didn't get picked up by network, network television. An amount of $200. That makes your total child support obligation set at, well, I'm going to make it $300 because $14,000 is a huge amount. So that makes your monthly child support obligation $694.56. I, I, I got some... Okay, so I was right. So the gross monthly income is $2,916.67. We're supposed to believe that she is spending $5,000 a month for her condo. That means she is in a negative. She is in a deficit of $3,000 or $2,100 per month, right? Okay, sure. So how then could her net monthly income um, um, be $2,466? You have to take into account how much money she pays in her living expenses, okay? You can say that I'm imputing additional income to you based on some other type of research, but legally speaking, this would not be a legally justified amount of child support because their script is so ridiculous that they have her paying twice what she makes per month in rent or mortgage or whatever that condo is. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> show you i just can't afford that. and you know what and her bills would have already gone into the child support calculation before you were in a contempt proceeding so the court before you come into court you would have already put in your bills you don't come into court and say i've got these bills i've got these bills now if there was a, a a contempt not establishing child support there was a contempt and then the court said they're not accepting that as bills and you want to put on testimony that's a whole different uh, set of circumstances but here this is not a contempt proceeding and what contempt means is that the court has already ordered you to pay child support and you fail to follow the court's order to pay child support and now the court is going to figure out whether or not they're going to put you in jail in order to coerce you to pay the child support basically or if they'll put some other type of purge provision in place so that you can be in compliance with the court's order they're just establishing a child support order and if you're just establishing a child support order then you already come into court with how much money the person is spending on expenses so again none of this technically even makes any sense Okay, now I want you guys to watch this part. It's actually, there's a couple of little little gems in here. The mother, is she obligated to pay check? Is she obligated to pay child support? I mean, they're not even editing these videos. Is she obligated to pay check? Is she obligated to pay child support? You know, just a little bit of polish would have probably helped this go a little bit further. And having an actual judge would have also helped. But... Anyway, moving on. Well, under Texas law, that is very much so the case. So although this is a grandparent in this situation, the child has been living with the grandparent for the past two years. And that is true. Whether it's a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, whoever has custody of the child, uh, physical custody of the child, can seek child support from the non-custodial parent. They can look for that through the courts because it the, the court system 
has an interest in people not needing to rely on welfare and temporary assistance and cash assistance and food stamps, that's the interest of the government in enforcing child support. They're trying to keep people from having to seek government assistance when there is a well uh, able-bodied non-custodial parent right there who can contribute to the well-being of the child. Well, now, because he's deceased, that child support obligation does not die with the dad. Mom is going to be obligated to pay child support. The court hears all kinds. And but we all know that intuitively, right? Like you all know that like you can't just leave your kid with somebody and then not have to pay child support, right? It's the how that this thing has gotten wrong. And the how is not, oh, so she hasn't paid you anything and how much do you make a year? Mm-hmm, this is how much I'm imposing. <laughs> Don't cut me off, I'm the judge. You know, like that is not how it works. There's like legal forms and affidavits. The Bureau of Support Enforcement for our state, but whatever the child support agency is for your respective states, they can search your social security number to figure out how much it is that you make. You come in to show, you know what, hey, here is my monthly expenses. Or if you're the custodial parent, here's my monthly expenses. Here, here's how much I make. Kinds of testimony to determine what mom's child support would be. You heard it. She pays $5,000 a month for a condo. Literally impossible. She has the money to be able to afford child support. And it's as simple as that, folks. She's going to have to pay. Do you know of anyone who's experienced a similar situation? Be sure to subscribe to our channel and make sure you comment below. You never know. Their story may end up as a scenario on our show. As a scenario on our show, okay? A scenario on our show. This was a scenario. Probably that's, you know, some secondhand, thirdhand account. This is some, something that happened. It's a script and it's really, really bad because at least, you know, I don't like law and order, but at least with law and order, they try to add some type of real legal background for the things that they're talking about and doing, right? It might, it might be speed tracked, you know, and go too fast, but at least there's something that has some type of legal basis. This had almost nothing, almost no legal foundation behind it whatsoever. It was so inaccurate <laughs> for how child support court actually works. <laughs> so I wanted to show you guys, and, and again, this is not me maligning Judge Vonda B because I think she's just so cute. And um, she is actually an attorney. So Judge Vonda B is an attorney. Um, and she is a family law attorney in Texas the law offices of Vonda Bailey. Savonda Bailey is her name. And she is on the super lawyers list for Texas. So she, you know, she's doing something. She's doing well for herself. But if you go to her website, no more drama with Vonda.com, there is nothing happening there. Like she's not actually using that website. I don't know if she tried to move into acting or whatever the case may be. And the support court with Judge Vonda B is a trademarked name. Um, and Vonda B is just a trademark personality under uh, the trademark name for Support Court with Judge Vonda B. This is a complete entertainment only type of show. Entertainment services and the nature of development, creation, production, and post-production services of multimedia entertainment content. This is not in any way educational. This is completely entertainment. There is no educational value of this show whatsoever, <laughs> but plenty of entertainment value okay the 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 whole like little uh outline that they came up with for this court case was a lot of fun they just needed to dial it in with a bit more accuracy so that it's not so glaringly obvious that it's fake <laughs> let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below i hope you found this one to be entertaining and i'll talk to you later bye